Ah, okay. You can see the sort of, uh, yes, good evening. It's nine o'clock. It's Monday night. It is time to tin your tip with myself, Gary Dibley, and I may have cut off the bit that it's sponsored by Liberty Flights. Um, what a damn day. That is all I'm going to say. Um, day from hell doesn't come close. Uh, the, the week from hell was last week, and uh, it sort of blended in to the weekend with a little respite and then started again today. Um, yeah. I'm surprised that I didn't turn on the camera and I'm swinging from the bleeding rafters. That's the sort of week it's been. Um, to sum it up tonight, my wife, uh, you know, decided while eating dinner that she cooked, <laughs> um, cracked her wisdom tooth um, and had to be airlifted off to the emergency dentist um, to, to have some stuff done so she wasn't crying like a baby all night. I hope she's not watching. Um, but apparently it was very, very painful. Of course, uh, my concern was um, with her being back by nine o'clock, um, which she she did. It was good, you know. Well done, love. Thank you. Um, but yes, we made it. Um, yeah, not good. And it has taught a lesson that you do not have to cook chops for that long. Um, they don't need to be crispy. Um, she learned from my mother, I think. Um, with all that said, uh, we are here, and um, and we may be slightly flummoxed and uh, all that sort of stuff. But it's it's all good fun. Um, <laughs> I'm lost. So, take a breath and, and let's start again. Um, you may have recalled last week. Um, I'm just seeing some of the comments fly past and uh, yeah, I, I need a laugh tonight. So uh, I need I need cheering up. Um, getting on with the script. Last week, uh, we obviously, past two weeks, we've done a bit of the old tip turn in and, uh, and we were putting some up for children in need. Um, very very quickly i would i would like to say a big thank you to a a, a few people um this is obviously i'm doing a tip a day for for children in need um another shameless plug there there's probably quite a few through this show um basically on uk vapors uh, in the modest section we launched that on the 27th which was five days ago um there is already 200 pounds in the uh, vapors of the world for children in need fund um, some massive thank yous going out. Um, Daz from Safer Sig off the bat, stuck in a hundred quid. Cheers, Daz. Um, people that have bought tips, and I'm gonna have to look down. Dazza, Wazzy, Jazz, Baldy, and Winter. Uh, Winter won the tip tonight. All superb. Um, pretty much most of them have paid over the odds uh, for the tips. So big, big thank you. Um, they're continuing to come every day this week. Um, a little bit of uh, info as well. Obviously, the the trip to Brussels. Uh, apparently, um, there are like two. I believe I'm, I'm really picking up and catching up on the fly. So you have to excuse me. I may have to correct this if Dave Dorm screws him here. Apparently, there are two tickets left, and the deadline for those two tickets are midnight on Wednesday. Um, so, oh, okay, yeah. There's 22 left. <laughs> That's a little bit different, Dave. You put two. Um, 22. There are 22 tickets left. Uh, and the deadline is, the, you can tell, midnight on Wednesday. Obviously, in touch through the VTT for VTTV forum, as per usual. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to start the first video. I'm going to get me stuff together, and I'll come back after this. Right, we're back in the room once again, and for another week. And as you can see, I've been a little bit busy. Um, I don't know if you've been watching the forums, and I'm going to use a, a little bit of a, a shameless plug. <clears throat> I've been doing, uh, making these with the support of uh, Graham from Siam with, uh, with the stainless steel uh, 304, I believe they are, inserts. Um, I'm selling a tip a day uh, on the UK Vapors Forum, all proceeds going to the Children in Need Fund. These two have sold already. Um, these are sort of going to be coming up. Um, so hopefully by the time this has gone out, one of these two will have sold. Maybe both of them, I don't know. Those are the little ripply ones. My latest little tip, 
So all of these are going to be going on on the uh, on the forum and will be sold for children in need. Um, there we go. What are we going to do this week? While well, I carefully place all these tips out of the way, he says, it's taking longer than he thought it would. We're going to do a bit of uh, yeah. We'll try a little bit of speed modding. Um, speed modding. One of these now. A lot of people have said, what is the simplest mod you can make? Now, I know I've done this before. Um, I thought we'd do a, a little sort of different twist on it, um, a bit of speed modding. This is going to be the simplest format that a mod can come in. Um, one that is a very good starting point, one that is a box mod. For our box mod, we will need a box, uh, AA battery box, comes with the leads attached and a on-off switch. Nice and simple. We're going to need an LED. Now you can pick whatever colour you want. In this case, I've got yellow, but I could put a, you know, I've got packs of sort of greens and reds and blues and, and all sorts. We're going to need a switch. I favour this little uh, square push button switch. Um, and we're going to need a resistor, a 220 resistor. Now, that is the components that we need to make this mod, other than our 510 connection. We're going to try and do this fast and rapid. I'm also going to be using some of the step down bits. Bit of fun, bit of speed modding, see how we can go. So first step in this mod is to relieve our back plate here and you will see uh, other end from where the switches are there is a little plate. We need to get that out. What I tend to do is put a screwdriver down, free it of the glue, get some pliers down in there, pull that out nice and simple. And next stage is to move out the one that the positive pin connects to on the other end. You can literally feed down, straight pull up and that will come out. That leaves us with our basic shell of a box. Next thing we need to do, there is a little plastic tab which is down in the one that's got the remaining spring on that we need to remove. Now the reason for that is because uh, with that tab in place, flat top batteries will not make a contact. So we just need to get our chisel and I, I use that, ease that down inside on the box and a couple of short sharp jabs downwards will relieve that plastic tab. Like I say this is all going to be about speed today. Effectively with that tab out we do have something that our battery will be able to make contact at the top, no problem. Now I'm using the normal AA here and I'll explain that a little bit later on as to why. What I'm going to do is use a 3mm drill bit and in the opposite side to, to where the battery holder is going to go, I'm going to drill two holes. One for the switch, roughly midway and slightly off centre, one for the LED and one for the ATI connection. So firstly, drill in ever so slightly off center towards the, the middle of the uh, of the compartment. Being careful, obviously I've got this near my hand. I'm just going to ease that through. A little bit lower down for the LED. That will give you that sort of scenario. Now what I need to do is flip that over and roughly centrally drill one in there for the uh, that's it. I'm switching straight away to my step drill bit that goes down to 9mm which is for the atty hole and I'm just going to bang that straight through up to 9mm have a fit that's going to pop in there nicely what I'll do from the other side the one that's going to be for the switch I'm just going to drill that pretty much all the way through and you can hear the batteries on my drill are dying. Switch out to the bigger one and I've got to drill this out now to round about I think it is sort of about 15, 14, 15 mil for the uh, for the switch. And you can see battery is dying. So I should be able to get my switch in there like so. With all those in place it is now time to, if you like, start assembling. Very very quick and very very simple. 
Um, the hole you can see sneaking over into the battery compartment isn't going to make any difference whatsoever. This is where your AA is going to come in. I'm just curling back the wire for the positive terminal behind this battery pin. I'm going to drop a dab of glue, which he's lost. He's found again. Down inside the bit that we've stripped off down here. So a dab of glue down inside there. I'm going to pop this down in, running my wire behind that middle bit there. And just holding that in place, like so. I will then put my battery in, which will pressure this up, hold that in place while it's gluing. Next stage is going to be to pop my switch in, centre up my switch and I tend to drop just a dab of glue down on the tabs down inside there to hold that in place. A little bead around uh, the end of, of an LED ever so slightly and I put the shortest pin which is going to be the negative pin in towards the switch, push that in your 3mm hole there is the start of your box mod very, very, very quickly. As you can see. I'm going to let that set up. I'll pop back in two and we'll crack on. And welcome back to the show. Uh, something I should have mentioned last week and didn't, um, something I should have done probably, was when I was putting the epoxy in, uh, I used the battery to hold the case in place, uh, the holder in place to make sure it was the right position. What I should have done was wrap the battery in a bit of cling film. That way, if you accidentally did get the batteries glued in place, if you left them too long or whatever, it would only be the cling film that got stuck in place and you could still get the battery out easily. And the cling film would be very easy to remove. So that's a quick tip. So what I've done is I've knocked back a bit of the excess epoxy that was sticking up from the holes and a couple of stray bits that weren't quite flat enough. So I just used the Dremel with a grinding tool on it and just knocked them bits away. So now all we have left to do is put it together, which should be a fairly straightforward thing. And I'll probably regret saying that. Here we go. So, start. I'm going to start off with the switch. That's, that's an easy thing to position up. That should be an easy thing to position up. I should say. you'll want to do if you're putting a switch like this in with the nut on the edge side is make sure that the flat edge of the nut lines up with this part of the case so it doesn't get in the way when you're trying to close the case like so so there's always a quick check for you any further you can see that's nicely out of the way it's not going to be a problem I'm going to switch the positive on this uh, for the simple fact that the atomizer connector does have the chance to earth through the case. So switching the negative has a potential for there to be a small problem. It's highly unlikely it would be, but that potential is always there. through one side okay. one thing 
put my money through a hole would be such a difficult job. So it stays in place, and I appear to have lost my other one here. Not to worry. I'm going to quickly turn up the solder here. I'm just going to bathe the solder across it like so. Sit down there out of the way. And the other end here, positive wire. I'll just pop through the other side. And once again. much leave as it is. Uh, with this board the, the arrangement is slightly unusual because the inputs are up at the top here and the outputs are down at the bottom so I need to remember that. So positive input. Which I'm going to put through from the back of the board. Throwing these through from the back because it's going to be easier to keep the wires out of the way. And I think I'll make it a little bit better. And there we go. And I am now breathing calm. Um, the wife has, has gone to bed um, with some horse tranquilizers. And before she left, I made sure she bought refreshments. To the shed. Um, I'm going to pour that and slip into our first little air break. Liberty Flight sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley.
Weber and I Weber Alexa, best in Yorkshire for your AC needs. That's iweber.co.uk and iweber-alexa.co.uk. I Weber and I Weber-alexa.co.uk. Proud sponsors of webertrails.tv. Flights sponsors 10 year tip with Gary Dibley. And we are back in the room, and uh, yes, much, much, much calmer now. Uh, let me give you a little, uh, a little insight as to what we're doing uh, today. Obviously, <laughs> I should have done this at the start, but it all went wonky. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking at uh, somebody wanted me to show the simplest mod that there is to make, and to me, that is a box mod. Um, obviously done it before, so we wanted to do it with a difference, which which was a bit of um, speed modding. It seemed like a good idea at the time, and uh, I was extremely short for time at the weekend, as, as will become clear a little bit later on um, as to why. Um, while the guys were enjoying themselves uh, at the knees meet, which looked, uh, I've seen some of the pictures, um, looking forward to, uh, to some of the footage that's coming up. I uh, hope all you guys had a great time at the knees, um, obviously. Lots coming up, Vape Fest in August. Um, prepping up for that one as well. Uh, let me crack on um, with a little bit more of the speed modding. Right, we're back, and I am going to crack on very, very quickly. It doesn't take too long for that uh, for that glue to set. As I say, we are going to do this in in a very fast fashion today. Um, next step: bend your pins down on your switch, and as you can see, I've got those running uh, level. Obviously, going to have a bit of waffle in between doing this. Um, bend your pin for your LED and I bend that down to meet the switch like so on my neg side of things. So effectively we are switching the neg. What I then tend to do is switch, cut off just so it will sit underneath the pin of that switch. Bit of solder. Now I did promise the team this week that there will be no innuendos. especially with the various bits that were mentioned last week. Um, going to bend that down towards the box, snip off, and I pretty much push that flat to the board like so, with enough room to get under and just tin up the end piece of that. Time for some wires. Feed your egg wire back through. Now my neg wire is running round and is going to go to the opposite switch terminal that the LED is on. So I'm just going to measure that up, trim that back, without making a complete cock up of it. <laughs> oh dear. This is thinner wire than I'm used to. I'm just going to tin up that wire, give it a twist. One of the other reasons I'm rushing today is I've got to go and help my wife trim a bush. Because our garden is getting absolutely overgrown. So I'm just running that round to this terminal. I'm going to run that ever so slightly underneath. And solder that one on. So effectively that will give us our, if you like, our neg switched. Pop my pos through. Or roughly measure enough of a positive to go through. Snip that back. And I'm going to snip back another length of wire. Need to trim these back. And I'm twisting these two wires together so they become blue. And I'll just solder them up. So effectively, this now will push through 
and we've got a return feed for our pos on our um, for our resistor. Roughly measure up a neg lead. We'll trim this back afterwards. About so long. And all I'm going to do is tin that up as well. Effectively, that gives us the bits that we now need to solder to our atty back into it. is possibly a bit longer than I really want but I'm going to need access to be able to work around with this because I need to solder everything in before I fix this into place. Now all I need to do is add a couple of wires to the bottom to go straight to the atomizer and a couple of wires over here, no oh, pardon me, a couple of wires over here for a switch which will be this latch switch. So one position it'll switch the display off and one it'll be on. All very simple. Now, next thing to wire up is this little latch switch. And I've just discovered that I've ordered the wrong kind. Because this is a two position switch, apparently. Meaning that when you press the button, uh, the first time it's pressed, let's see, this would be a make a circuit from here to here. And the second time you press it, it makes a circuit from here to here. And then the third time you press it, it closes the circuit off altogether. So what that's going to mean, I can still use it, but what I mean is you'll press it once and the display will come on, eh, the display will stay on. You'll press it next time, the display will go off. And the time after that, you'll have to press the display again. And the, but the display will stay off. It's going to be one on, two off, basically. Just something to have to remember. It would have made it a lot easier if I'd realised that beforehand. But there you go. And you may have noticed I didn't tin up the wires when I put them through here. And that's because the holes are so small. If I put solder on the wires before I put them through, I probably wouldn't have got them through. I'm going to turn up this wire now for this side. <coughs> oh Just a quick amount of tin. That's one wire done. Which pin I pick here? That's two done. And I just need to try and get this into a position where you can see it. So normally I wouldn't have left this much wire, but I need to be able to show what I'm doing here. So I'll just pop the two wires through from the base. normal today. And 
just run a bit of solar down the wires. Like so. The other two wires I need to put on, of course, will be there. And I might as well connect this. Solar out there both. And you're pretty much done. So, the switch will sit on this side so I can go under the board. This is all incredibly tight in space wise. So the switch will sit somewhere out there once I've epoxied it in place. And all I'll be left to do is to solder these two to the atomizer connector. seem to have less wire available on the positive than the negative. I'll sort of the positive one in first. Right, so moving on rapidly and uh, I've secured an ATI connection in the grips. I'm just going to tin up middle pin and outer pin. My two wires obviously that come in here and I've got a single wire which at the moment is connected to nothing. Um, neg wire obviously to the outside on the neg pin and the two wires that we've twisted together down on the centre pin nice and simple Whee! so what we need to do now obviously we've got this scenario with, with our ATI with the two wires popping through I'm just going to feed that back through the box, both of these, the pos and the neg. And I'm going to try and keep pos and neg a little bit separate. I want the neg coming down outside of the box and the pos coming down on the middle side of the box. I'm just going to feed that ATI connection in there, separate out my two wires. What I'm going to do now is just drop a bead of glue around the outside of my ATI connection as we normally do. A little bit there. And this is where you, you ease that in ever so slightly, hold it in place, level it up. Got to be level on these. And then I'll run a couple of beads just round inside because there's a plastic tab, if you drill it right, that will just catch there and you want to get the glue down in there. Holds it all in nicely. A little blow helps itself that bit quicker. I can take that out now. While that's setting, we can crack on. Let me just push this 
wire down flat, that one down in there. Now, my neg lead is going to come back round and solder to the pin that we got this, uh, this on here. So I'm just going to roughly measure that up. Excuse me one tick. Trim that back, tin up the end of this wire, and then literally I'm just going to, same again, I'm going to feed this on the other pin of that switch, a bit fiddly, in fact very fiddly, I'm trying to do this and film it, it's that whole lot soldered together. I can then feed this wire back down inside the box. This one here, what I'm going to do is trim back relatively short, sort of about like that. Here, you get me? Trim it back and tin it up. Now that's tin, we've got our final connection to make, which is going to be our resistor. Now our resistor is effectively, if you like, protecting a little bit our, uh, our um, LED. So I roughly measure this out, so I want it to go past the switch. So I'm going to snip off roughly where I want that end to go, and leave enough roughly to strip off where the other end, the wire, is going to attach. What I'll do then is just tin up each end of this resistor. One end, two ends. And quite simply where I've measured this, my long end, or my longer end, is going to go to my pos pin. And it's a simple case of, of, it's quite tricky, touching these two together, getting it hot, touching the two together. So the two wires contact and make a joint. And then it's literally feeding this. Now I try to put a little bit of a, a bend in it to get it down and feed it. You can bend this around as you're doing it. Feed that under the LED little bit of solder and then it's a case of bonding those two together as you can see down in there. Now it's a case of tidying up really, feeding everything back down inside the box. If you've done it properly you've got no worries of anything shorting against anything else and you will end up with something looking a little bit like so that is a very very quick box mod and he's lost the focus very very quick box mod very very simple to make my switch went ever so slightly squonky because <laughs> i'm rushing you'd obviously pay more attention but i've got a wonky donkey switch now uh, which is cool uh, let's just pop a battery in obviously we've got nothing there turn the power on We've got our LED lighting up. If our LED is lighting up, that means we can slap our battery pack on. Now, bearing in mind that this connection is still ever so slightly loose. And we've got our back on. This our wrong back for starters. Different backs. This is the one for this box. So there is our box mod, obviously you've got your only offy switchy, nee, nee, nee. doesn't worky worky, all that sort of stuff. Um, should be able to strap on an atomizer. Obviously with a tanky, this, this is overhanging ever so slightly. You can position your, uh, you know, your, your connector wherever you want, um, turn it on.
working very nicely. Quick, simple, little bit of speed modding. Hope it made sense as we went. If not, there is a full, more in-depth um, instructional video on how we made one of these. Very simple, very simple indeed. A very good starting point. If you haven't watched, I think I've, I've done a video where we've broken that down in lots and lots of stages. The reason we've done this, I've been asked, um, people have asked me, what is the simplest mod to start with? To be honest, that is it. 14500 battery, box mod, very few components, very little time. I mean, you can take as much time as you, as you want over it, but it uh, doesn't take long at all. Back to me, in studio. And there we go. Um, yeah, unfortunately, um, yes, the, the garden is now looking very nice. Um, and obviously, later on in the day, I made the box. Um, so, with all that said, let's get into our second little air break. And I will pop back very shortly after this. Liberty Flight sponsors 10-Year Tip with Gary Dibley. Sponsors 10 Year Tip with Gary Dibley. And there we go, we are back in the room once again. Um, I'm going to give you a very, very, very quick reminder. Um, I know I shouldn't be doing this, but it's, it's a shameless plug and it's for a good cause. Um, Children in fund uh, in five days has gone to £200, um, making a tip a day, and that will be going up for sale for those that ask in uh, on UK Vapors, and it will be in the modding section. Um, I'm just randomly making whatever. Um, there's no plan, this, that, and the other, so there's no way of selecting one. I know people have asked, but there's not. Um, it's whatever the little fingers and the hand will do. And um, I can tell you, polishing the damn things is... Yeah, it gets painful at times. Um, let's crack on with our next little bit, which is Mark's, uh, he's called it a tight fit, um, and it certainly looks like it. Final bit. So I've got the connector in position. I just need to... That's all it to the connections. on camera as I do it. So the 
this should be a lot easier just to touch the same and that's pretty much everything done I've just got to pop the connector in place and give everything a test I'll be right back so I've screwed on the cartonizer tank and I've just popped it roughly in place for now so I need to test it before I glue anything in place I'll pop the batteries in and it's a moment of truth time and a very definite sizzle there I'm going to press that button That isn't working in the slightest, is it? I've got no idea why. Now, apparently I'm going to have a display on all the time and I've just wasted all that time with the switch. And I can't quite figure out what's going wrong here. I shall have to go off and do some testing on that board, I think. I shall back a bit later with it. I'm back, and apparently the switching on this board doesn't work the way it does on other boards I've used. I'd assume that it was just a case of bridging the circuit between the two contacts, and that would switch the display off. Apparently not. There's nothing I do to those two terminals will to stop the display working. So I've just removed the switch altogether and it's going to be a display on all the time. No real big loss. But as you'll see it's firing fine. And you have the option with this switch to check the voltage in the batteries. The switch between the voltage in the batteries and the voltage output. Of course that only works while the button's being pressed. So all that's left to do now is to epoxy this board into place and this atomizer connector and I'll be back so I've epoxied the board in place and the atomizer connector as well just covered up with a good layer of epoxy to give it a nice support so not sure before I do now the eagle eye on you might have noticed that I've got two different makes of batteries here and this is very definitely not a matched pair and I wouldn't advise using two different batteries in a stacked form like this. Uh, I'm only using these to test it and that's only because I can't for the life of me find the matching pair that I've got. So I've had to do this for the show. So be safe and use two batteries of the same make that you've bought at the same time preferably and keep them in a pair when you charge them so lecture over as you should be able to see from there it's reading 4.2 volts and that's easy adjustable from a little screw turn it down and up very easily I'll leave it at 4.2 because that's what I prefer it for this. And pretty much there. I'll pop the cartonizer back on. And it sizzles away nicely at that sort of voltage. And, then, and hopefully I won't get any more telephone interruptions during the show. So, like I was saying, uh, got a nice compact tin, pretty neat inside and at this point when I know everything's working perfectly everything's all set I can just take off a little plastic covering holder from the display and that's here done 
calculus when you press the selector. I'll tell me there's seven volts left in the batteries, which means they're both flat. Uh, 4.2. Perfect. So I'm off to charge them and see if I can find a matching pair to use instead. And I'll see you all. Well, hopefully, I've just seen you all that needs me. Those I haven't, I'll see you next week. Right, obviously we've, we've made that very, very, very quickly. Um, and what I wanted to do is, is just come back, um, A, because I might run short on time, uh, and, and B, there are many variants. Now, I have made um, you know, variants of this box mod, and they are relatively simple to do. Let me show you the same sort of thing that I mean. Um, this particular box uh, is, is made very much like the one that we've just done. Um, however, you will notice a big difference. There's a great hole in the top of that one. And the switch is mounted actually further down the mod. Um, the LED I haven't got on this. I didn't feel the need for an LED. But if you wanted to, you could pop one through the hole in the bottom there. This particular one is made so that uh, you can recess uh, a carto down inside there. Um, and effectively all that we've done is, is, is taken um, everything that we've got in here and dropped it back ever so slightly. What I've done though, rather than securing the ATI connection in this end, is secured it um, halfway down with some of the uh, epoxy resin that I've used um, and just literally run the, uh, you know, the, the POS wire uh, from our pin there down, all connected exactly the same. Um, the only difference, I haven't got an LED in here, so I don't have a resistor and I don't have you know, the additional wire feeding back off, off my, uh, my ATI connection. Um, as I say, if you want to put one in, you can put one in there, wired up exactly the same way as this. Now, with this one, you need to ream this hole down ever so, you know, it's more, more than, than the other one. Um, now, I've taken that out just to round about 10mm. The 10mm bit will just go in there, it's tight. When I'm setting off the epoxy in this, what I'll do is I'll put a carto in, as you can see it's a carto going in there. I'll stick the carto in and I'll set that up so that comes through central. What that means is when you've got your uh, you know your, your back on, and again, get that quite level when you're putting the back on because it's got to slide over. What you've then got is a nice stealthy if you've got a tiny tip which believe it or not I do happen to have a nice little tiny tip on there and you've got a really really stealthy carto mod really good for the uh, for the pocket these ones again I've knocked this one up very quickly um, as you can see I've got that with a little bit of atty sticking out you don't have to have that uh, you can recess it further if you want. The reason I tend to have a little bit out is because sometimes when you're these the tips won't you not got you know, enough grip to screw on them, but I leave just enough on there to get you know a, a finger on to be able to pull that out. Screw it. Easier when you're screwing them in. Ease it with the inside. You can just roll that in. Obviously with any atty, don't over tighten it. You don't want to crush your pin a variance. Um, lots of things you can do with these little plastic boxes. If you want any uh, hints, tips, advice or whatever, give us a shout. We are more than happy to help you. There we go. Two for the price of one this week. I'll see you back in the studio. And there we go. Uh, two mods complete. Where do we go? Um, <laughs> to be honest, God only knows. I'm sure we'll come up with something um, for next week. Uh, yes, I think it's, it's sort of well over a year and a mod a week. Um, interesting stuff. Uh, coming up this week, don't forget, it is Marco uh, with Vapor Scene tomorrow. And straight after Marco, we have this.
don't have a clue what the guys are saying, but it sounds good. <laughs> uh, on Wednesday, obviously, as always, we have Dave Dorm with VT Talk. Um, to be honest, I know Dave sort of played it down yesterday about his role in organising this thing to Brussels. Um, big kudos to Dave. Uh, massive, massive undertaking. And I can I can see from, from the sort of team chat the work that Dave has put into that. And um, massive, 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 massive. Uh, thanks, I would imagine, from most of the people in chat um, to Dave for sorting that. There are 22 tickets remaining. They are going fast and uh, they are going uh, at midnight on Wednesday. On Thursday, we have the uh, the Haze Hour. And obviously on uh, on Sunday, we've got uh, Dave Kitson with his tackle box. Um, I've got a poorly wife now to go and attend to. Uh, she is uh, apparently um, got to go and have a tooth out in hospital tomorrow um so they've told her to come home tonight and uh, and take some tablets and have a <laughs> salty mouthwash <laughs> no um so with all that said it has been emotional and it has been emotional tonight um with <laughs> good night guys Let's see you next week Tip with Gary Dibley.